The first video in this series introduced us to the idea of making advanced materials like carbon fiber from bitumen produced by the Alberta oil sands. This second video argues that Alberta's Bitumen Beyond Combustion program is not unique. There are major efforts around the world, especially in China, to make cheaper and better materials from hydrocarbons. So let me illustrate this with a story. In September 2023, I was reporting on the World Petroleum Congress, held that year in Calgary, and the event included technical sessions featuring presenters from around the world. I happened to stumble upon one about making advanced materials from oil and gas. The panel moderator was Dr. Ibrahim Abba, the head of Saudi Aramco's Technology Commercialization Division. His introductory remarks really captured my attention. He said that just like there is a global energy transition underway, there is also a materials transition. He pointed to the world's rapidly growing population, the growing middle class and emerging economies that is demanding more consumer goods and the environmental implications of meeting that as proof of growing demand for a new approach to how humans make and use materials. Then he introduced the panel, which included a senior member of Dr. Abba's research group, a scholar from China, and Dr. Paulo Bomben of Alberta Innovate's Bitumen Beyond Combustion Program. I've interviewed Paulo many times over the past decade but this was the first time I had heard about a materials transition. I later interviewed him up about that transition, and here are some excerpts from that interview. You know, many people may have heard of an energy transition. And I think in parallel, we also have a bit of a materials transition as well from where we're going to get our materials from. We have a growing global population. We're looking at potentially 9.7, 10 billion people by 2050. That's another 1.7 to 2 billion people that we have today on Earth. So where are all those people going to get their materials from? So we need to find new, really new sources of materials that aren't uh, disturbing additional land uh, from, from where they're collected from, and also um, that are sustainable. And so one, one of the ways to, to look at that is as we move to an energy transition, maybe decrease the amount of fossil fuels we're consuming, can we use those fossil fuel resources, which are nature's gift to you know, Alberta and, and other jurisdictions around the world, can we use those and transition away from making fuels, but actually turning them and making them to materials. So I think the materials transition is really about where we're getting our material resources from compared to where we got them from in the past, and enabling that to be a more sustainable um, uh, resource. If we can make uh, hydrocarbon-derived materials that have similar or better properties than those metals, then we can displace those metals. But in, in many cases, we may probably just be adding like, onto those metals because of, again, that growing population is going to command more resources for those materials. It may not simply be a displacement, it may be a growth opportunity um, and filling that gap that is going to exist in the next 50 years. Yeah, I think some of them may, may displace metals in certain parts, uh, certain, such as in vehicles, you might see more composite parts in vehicles. You know, ideally, uh, that, would, that would lightweight the vehicle, for example. Uh, there are other places where it would be uh, above and beyond um, the, the, the equipment, that the steel and, and metals that are in the vehicle. So I think it's a combination of both, uh, and I think we're going to need a combination of both uh, to achieve some of the light weighting and other uh, material property objectives we're looking for. Well, I think we're going to still need to make plastics, so that, that, that part of the uh, chain right now will still exist, but I think we're going to need to make more of it, to, again, to meet that demand. So in doing so, we also need to be aware of sort of the, the life cycle of those materials. So as we make more of these materials. We need to be cognizant of what's happening at the end, set up those recycling programs, set up other types of treatment programs to make sure that those don't end up in our oceans, and in our landfills, and they actually are truly circular and sustainable. I think the idea of circularity is something that's been talked about for a long time. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult to consider recycling until you reach a critical amount of actual material that needs to be recycled because that's when you draw the interest, that's when you draw the, the resources in to actually resolve that problem. What we're applying certainly in the Bishop and Beyond Combustion Program um, is thinking about right up front, if we make this product, what does the end of life look like? How does that impact so the social acceptance of this product? How can we design it in a way where it is circ circular and sustainable uh, going forward? Well, I mean, given the, just the growth of materials that we're going to need 
over the next 30 years. And the fact that we have a tremendous hydrocarbon resource at our, um, available to us, uh, the opportunity, and, and we're already doing this with the petrochemicals and from natural gas. Uh, there are a number of, uh, of different companies in the province you know, that make polymers and polymer derivatives. Uh, but you know, expanding that, but also looking at it from the side of bitumen, can we, can we look at the, the light ends of bitumen because we've been focused on the heavy, heavier components for the Bitchman Beyond Combustion Program, but now let's look at the light ends. Can we transform those into these uh, plastics, into these polymers that the world's going to need both now and into the future? So I think there's a tremendous opportunity as we continue to look at how to fully utilize the whole bitumen barrel.